Eric Ten Hag has been playing players like Bruno Fernandes, Jadon Sancho and Wout Weghorst out of position this season, but why is he doing it? Well, one of the reasons is to do with the profile of players that he's moving around. So Wout Weghorst is a good example of this. This guy's always been a striker, a number nine. He's a big, tall, massive unit, a fridge freezer. So therefore, he's been cast as a target man. That's what he does. But Weghorst does an awful lot more. So one of the things you can use him for, sure enough, are his physical attributes. And if you're playing a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3, whatever you've got here, you can then play long ball from the keeper because Weghorst is going to win this ball far more likely than Rashford, far more likely than Anthony not Sancho, Fernandez. they're not going to win that ball in the middle of the pitch. So that gives you one little option there. If you put Veghorst further up the pitch to so number nine, put Rashford slightly further back, sure enough, you can aim this ball long from the goalie or from a defender to try and get the ball to him and then look for knock-ons or something like that. But that's not really what Man United are doing. They're not playing to try and then counter-press high up the pitch. And with Veghorst is here, defenders know they can get tight, play a relatively high line, and that sort of limits uh, Man United and pushes them either further towards their own goal. However, if you push Veghorst back into midfield and push Rashford up here, suddenly defenders are scared that he can make these runs in behind because he's very, very fast. And then you've got players like Fernandez or Anthony or Sancho who can play the ball whoop, like this into someone like Rashford behind. So naturally then, what defenders do is drop a little bit deeper to make sure that they can't be beaten by the offside trap from Rashford. Then that means that in doing so, if I get rid of these lines, you create a bit of space between the defensive line and the midfield line, this sort of weird shape here. That means that players like the number 10s, Sancho or Fernandez, whoever's there, can move into this space and have a bit more space between lines to play. That then means you can find more through balls from higher up the pitch to get in your players even higher up the pitch. So there's one use there. So we're making best use of Rashford's threat going forward. You then create space for others. Veghorst being deeper also allows for that. And then you can just, of course, knock the ball to Veghorst, takes the ball down and then plays in his teammates in midfield. There's never a reason why he's very useful in this position. So if you have Rashford as the number nine going forward, and he's, the, he's playing very well this season, as you may have noticed, what you get in the final line is that Veghorst is not just a deep player here, he will regularly get into the last line to be another attacker. So he starts from deep, but he can time his run to get forward. So when you do get the ball into the box, Veghorst can be here as a number nine, but also a 10. And then when you're trying to press from the front, Rashford might show the ball to one side. What you've got is Veghorst, who will work as hard as anyone has ever worked before to try and get the ball back with his pressing numbers, which are very, very high. So very useful in the press, but you can also uh, receive the ball from deep to help link play, but then also join the last line as an extra striker. So he's doing everything he would think he would do, but giving an extra bit to the team as well. So how about Jadon Sancho, a player signed at great expense for being a winger, uh, for England, Borussia Dortmund, a very talented player. But what we've seen of him at Man United is that when he is wide in these sorts of attacking positions, if Man United are in their front five, is that he doesn't really have the explosive pace to go past players in this sort of situation. In fact, his best games at Dortmund, he usually had players around him to help him bounce wall passes, like a one-two, this sort of thing, where you'd be able to go around the outside of them, or have an overlapping fullback, which Ten Hag United don't always do. So the things that make him best in that tactical situation don't exist. So how to make best use of him otherwise? And it makes sense if you think about his profile, this guy is great at receiving the ball in tight spaces, this sort of area here, and then being clever with it, spotting a through pass, so he's the one that can play the sort of through balls in for someone like Rashford, or an overlapping runner from someone like this. You put him in the middle of the pitch from here, he's very good at being able to make things happen there, like a David Silva type of character. He's not the same sort of player, but if you profile him, what he's best at, doesn't have the pace out wide to be there, so put him in the middle where he can do special things in condensed spaces. So that's one of the reasons, or some of the reasons, why Sancho is playing in this sort of position now, rather than out wide you make more use of what he's good at but also it's to do with how he presses and what, you, what uh, Ten Hag wants from his number 10. He said before the Southampton game I think at number 10 we need a strong press you need quick feet in the midfield you need a player there who can create who can run in behind which Jadon Sancho can do so we think about this if Jadon Sancho starts as a 10 here he's very useful in the wide areas sometimes when he's surrounded but actually he's best in these half space areas here so if you start at 10, you've got players close by, you can ping wall passes off, then you can suddenly be in your best position to be able to create and score more, in theory. So that kind of makes sense for Jadon Sancho why you do that. So how about Bruno Fernandes, one of United's most important players? He's always played at number 10, always around the back of the striker, around about these sorts of positions on the pitch. Now, he has played under Ten Hag at left wing and the right wing recently, and there is good reason for it, and it's kind of obvious, it's his delivery. He's very good at sending the ball in from different uh, positions and different angles from what you might get from other wide players. So we put Rashford wide left, and we put Sancho off, and put, I don't know, put Martial on up top, right? And Anthony's wide right. Now, Fernandes, we think about what he's very good at, 
When teams play high against Man United, they'll leave uh, space in behind. Fernandez is amazing in transition. So he gives the ball away a lot, but he tries things. He makes things happen. So he'll push loads of like balls long for someone to get in behind, like Anthony, or he can try and thread someone through. We can try and bend a, a curve pass out wide to get someone in these sorts of positions. A great player to have in that situation. But not every team gives Man United that space in behind. They don't always give that. So it's not always useful having Fernandez in the central 10 position, because then what you get is lots of misplaced passes where he tries to make things happen when he shouldn't. And Ten Hag wants to control possession trying to make them be less of a transition team and more of a possession-based team. And having someone pinging the ball out all the time is maybe that useful. So if you have Fernandez uh, central positions, the angles of passes are going to be different. You're going to mostly try and hook it into these sorts of positions from central. But if you put him out wide, say to the right wing, suddenly the angle of pass that you can put into the box is different. So if you put Fernandez deep right, like this, he can hook one of these balls into here. If you get him to this sort of situation, he can put the ball in like this. Now. Man United play Anthony at the right wing most of the time. And Anthony, clearly right winger, gets to this point here. He can make this pass if he's got a right foot. He can make this pass if he's got a right foot. But we know he doesn't. He's only got a left foot. That's all he does. And when Anthony gets to this part of the pitch, defenders know exactly what he's going to do and can lock him down. So he receives the ball, wherever it's gone over here. Uh, he will do one of two things. He will either try and get into this position here where he can shoot, that's where he does, or he will pass backwards because just like Sancho on the other side or whoever's playing there, um, Anthony doesn't have the explosive pace really to take on a defender and go past him with pure speed or skill. He just can't really do it in the Premier League anyway. So what happens is they horse shoot around, it goes around and the move kind of breaks down. So if you have Anthony here, want to make that move, defenders naturally put a blocking player in this position, so when he cuts inside, there's no use, he's blocked, and again, horseshoeing. But if you put Fernandez in the right wing and Anthony's not playing, then suddenly you get Fernandez in this position and he can do more things, he can try and push the ball in here. If he's going to receive the ball here, it might force out a fullback to come into this position, and then if you've got someone like Martial around, he might nip into the space left between that, which is a little uh, flick through. Also, crucially, if Fernandez can get to here, he can cross the ball into the box from this angle. Now you might say, well, this would be fine if you have Anthony in this position and you have an overlapping fullback, but United don't always do that. They don't really use their fullbacks like that at the moment, certainly in most games. They tend to rely on the wingers being wide, like this, and then putting more players through the middle of the pitch. Which brings me on to my next point. It just suits the team tactically. That's the main reason that Ten Hag does this, right? So Anthony over here, we know exactly what he's going to do. It's very predictable. If you suddenly push Fernandez into a position he wouldn't normally be in, he can then help create a bit of uh, unpredictability because if Fernandez is going to go here, no one really expects that. Anthony can go inside. Fernandez ends up in this position. Defenders don't know what to do. It creates a bit of um, instability in the defensive line, which can help you create chances, is very important. And you can't do it with all different players, like Garnacho clearly is a winger who wants to attack this left space and get in behind teams, that's what he does. So you wouldn't put Garnacho through the same area because he's not got the same type of skill set as Jaden Sancho, they're very different players. Garnacho is explosive, dynamic, Sancho is quite intricate and clever, and that's sort of one of the reasons it works. So then you make use of all these players, you put Rashford in the last line, you've got Veghorst here, you've got Garnacho getting in behind if that's who's playing that side, and then suddenly you get a long ball out from De Gea, because they're being pushed and they don't want to play it from the back. Veghorst can take it down and then suddenly you've got all these different players doing different things. Anthony's inside now, you didn't expect him to be there, into his best position so we can try and shoot from there. You've got Rashford playing up top, maybe in the left half space, player getting in behind, pushing the defence back. Everything they're doing makes them slightly more unpredictable. If you take uh, Anthony out and put in Sancho in this position, the same sort of thing in theory should happen. That suddenly you get Veghorst is a 10 but also a last line striker, Sancho is a 10 but also we can move into wide areas. You just get more of every single player you've got in that pitch by letting them move around. And the unpredictability of positional rotations is what gives you little gaps in defences who are locked down nice and deep, trying to make it hard for United to score. Ten Hag is trying to make them a nice fluid, possession-based team, trying to move away from that transitional style that they've been locked into for so long. And these sorts of movements are the things that might help them going forward. It certainly works to get more out of players like Veghorst and Sancho going forward. But whether it will work in the long term, we'll only know with time. And if you enjoyed learning about time and the secrets of it, how it evolved, then you should find a video on time. But if you enjoyed this, then please subscribe to Tifo IRL. We'd love to have you around for more so you see when all our videos are released. Goodbye. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.